Thank you. That was great. Um, okay, so now, uh, maybe we should leave that there, shouldn't I? No Daisy at all. Okay, so um, now we've got Daisy, the hag, who is a queer non-binary poet and student mental health nurse based in Brighton. Um, she won the Bridport Prize for Poetry in 2013 and has been widely published in journals and anthologies, including the Poetry Review, Poem, Poem, it's a good name for a journal, um, The Morning Star, as in the newspaper, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> the Rialto, Poetry Wales, Ambit, Poems in Witch, and the Emma Press Anthology of Love. Mm -hmm. So she's performed at events um, from Shambhala and Boomtown Festivals, and at the Edinburgh Book Festival and Brighton Fringe and a bunch of other places, but she's here now, so we've got her. <laughs> so, and then also, I think we've been trying to get you since last year, so this is nice. It's nice to have someone who was supposed to come. And, um, <laughs> and I mean, like, you know, you know, you have like a path. I don't know. I'm an awkward person again. Um, so they also run and regularly contribute to queer and intersexual fem feminist poetry and spoken word nights. So, would you like to come up now? Or have I made it too weird? <laughs> <laughs> and assault, um, unhealthy eating, biphobia, I think that's it. So yeah, just if anyone needs to leave, that's fine. The whole gorge is spread. I cannot write you anymore, so I stop eating. Not completely, I have Marmite on toast twice a day if I can manage it. My stomach hates every mouthful that isn't you. I have given up trying to explain to my stomach that you are a person and do not nourish my life anymore in the way that soup and broccoli nourish my life. It is a romantic, my stomach and sulks, telling me it is full when it is not, the way that all romantic sulk and do not finish their dinner. I cannot write you because it is not poetry. When you want nothing, can't understand how anyone could want anything anymore. We should not be celebrating this. In real life, if you speak to a person the way I speak to a crowd or a Word document about you, everyone thinks you are crazy. They tell you to stop fantasticizing, which I am pretty sure is not even a word. It is certainly not poetry. When I touch my own breasts in the dark and think about you, I am not thinking assonance then, or about how there could be some corner of my humiliation. I have not yet raided for its innate beauty. It is not beautiful to feel that all the life you have built is made of somebody not feasting on you. No wonder my stomach is furious. Thank you. I really want to do a new poem that I've never read before, but um, it's really scary, so <laughs> please be nice to me. <laughs> uh, it's about trauma and how that can kind of just affect everything in your life. It's called After Violence, The Singing. I want to climb back inside the evening and look at everything more closely, how it always feels, after I am unfrozen, when my body is not so heavy with panic, no music could soak in. It is sunny, and I spend two days hiding in old messages from before or curled in bed before I realize what I am doing. 
of the weeks of rain, the sun is unbearably sweet on my bed. I persuade myself to walk somewhere. It seems so ridiculously close. Two days, like I could still climb back into it and be different. The city is beautiful. The city of my loss opens around me. The sun shines on every window and all the cars of my loss are moving now. The sea is calling that somewhere in it hangs a pocket of this sunshine caught in some jellyfish of my loss. It is everywhere and I am not in it. Though somewhere here, that version of my body is moving. Sun on her skin. Where are you, sing my hands, as they carry, they wash, they slice, they unlock. I could not look at you, sing my ribs, but my heart turned in me like I was the last look out of a car window and beat at everything shatterproof to be let out. And the song of my blood still carries the beating, but I cannot climb back into it and nothing I beat at will break. typical of me to be by, kid with sense of self so unstable, easily destroyed, the party everyone else was going as their favourite person or thing, I went as literally nothing, or everything, even the decision to be nothing would have been too bold, too concrete and thus easily attacked. I went as whatever to every single day of my childhood. So typical then to be the kind of thing nobody knew really existed, except to use for fun. Hey, make out with each other. How many cute girls does it take to begin to hate making out with cute girls? <laughs> when you realize it's really about their boyfriend or the guy who is talking the loudest, deciding the game. Who will touch who next? Who will be watching? How many watching boys does it take for yourself to go into hiding? How does it feel to realize you are something you have always known you are? The first time I heard the word biphobia and it was like I existed, this friend who was saying this word for what happened to me had just conjured me full size in front of her, the way only people taught to be invisible know the words to appear each other. Sometimes it feels impossible to convey to other people why Halloween is so important. How I don't give a shit if anyone else gets my costume. I'm dressing as a different coerced and furious woman one day out of the year, and it has nothing to do with any of you. Thank you. Just gonna do one more, if I've got time. Thanks. <laughs> um, this is quite an old one now, I wrote it. Um, just after the American uh, general election two years ago. Um, and I, I always feel like I have to say before I read it that I, I'm aware that I'm not the person most affected by those events, but obviously they affect um, queer people, LGBTQIA people, uh, people of color, disabled people, poor people, immigrants living in the States a lot more than me. But this was like my, personal response. It's called Every Single Crazy Ex-Girlfriend Ever.
You know when you're female or perceived as female and it kind of makes you hate everyone, like, can no one fucking speak to me ever? Like when you're queer but you've loved men too and you can't even write about how you ate to run your tongue over your girlfriend's clip just in case it seems like you're trying too hard to be gay. <laughs> Only you actually do ache to run your tongue over her clip and you end up using all these metaphors involving flowers and storms and farming euphemistically and hating yourself. Or you stop seeing someone and when you tell your friends none of them get it, like you're saying, she makes me feel bad about myself all the time, so I've decided not to date her. Could require any further explanation. Like maybe you are not a reliable witness to your own life and you just forgot not to be upset for a while. And once they remind you, you'll be okay again, the way tough love works in the movies. Or when almost every sexual relationship you've ever had involves someone making you do something you didn't want to do. And then a man accused of sexual assault in double digits gets given the most powerful job in the world. Because when it comes to it, for most people, the testimony of people like you doesn't matter. And depending on the day, you either want to stop eating and stop replacing the fluids you've lost from crying and just stop everything. Or you want to go around screaming that you are having your feelings. Is that okay with all of you? Do you need me to explain any of that or provide some evidence or maybe apologize for it like you are every single crazy ex-girlfriend ever? You want to speak only to crazy ex-girlfriends. You cannot hear anyone talk about their crazy ex-girlfriend without wondering how she is feeling and what she is doing and kind of wishing you were talking to her instead. <laughs>